how to create an IVR. You start by going to Call Features, and you click on IVR. Add IVR, and we're going to look at our diagram. We want an IVR with these options. And then we want a second IVR with these options. Now we've already created our call queues. I haven't created IVR number two yet. Call Q2, outside number, voicemail. So in this case, um, I'm going to create IVR2 before I create IVR1. So if I want them to be numerically right, um, I need to see that. So my first IVR is going to be IVR1, which is 7,000. So I'm going to make IVR2 and use 7,001 just because I want just because I want IVR1 to be the first number. IVR2 to be the second number. I'm going to allow this this uh, trunk this uh, sorry I'm going to allow this IVR to be able to call out because I need it to go to an external number. So it needs to have national rights. And this is for the IVR to be able to make an outbound call. When somebody calls in, if I want them to be able to dial any extension number without having to be told about it, I keep this checked. If I don't want them to be able to do that, I uncheck. I don't mind. I want him to be able to reach anyone he wants if he knows the extension number without being told. There's a blacklist, whitelist, stuff like that you can mess with. You can also replace the display name of your caller ID with the IVR name if you so need. Uh, alert info, that uh, is if you're going to change a ringtone, something like that, based on which IVR goes through. The prompt is the recording that is heard. Um, you've reached blah, blah, blah company, press one for this, two for that, three for this, four for that. And that's the prompt that you have to record. Right now it's just going to say welcome, and that's all you get. Response timeout is how long, oh, I missed one, the digit timeout is how long between digits do we wait for you to hit another digit. So if you start typing in 134, but wait three seconds between the one and the three, it's going to send it to number one. So you have to type quickly um, within three seconds between digits if you want to continue typing in an extension. If you press one and wait three seconds, it's going to go to option number one. The response timeout is how long after the IVR finishes playing do I do my next step? And we have it set to 10 seconds. So after the last recording is done, they have 10 seconds to decide something, or it's going to go to one of these repeat options. Right now we have the system told to repeat it three times if they don't press anything or if they uh, press something wrong. If they do that three times, this is the recording that gets played to them before it does the next step. The next step is on the next page. So after three times of not pressing something or pressing something wrong, it's going to say goodbye and hang up on it. And we can change that. We can make it go to a voicemail. We can make it go to a queue. We can make it do whatever we want. I'm going to leave them as default. As far as our options, we want one to go to ring group two, two to go to an IVR, ring group two, two to go to an IVR, oh, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. This is IVR two, so we're over here. One's gonna go to a cell phone, two is gonna go to an extension with following. Let's fix that. One is gonna go to an outside number, like a cell phone, so. Two is gonna go to an extension with follow me, which is my extension, which we created earlier. Three is going to go straight to voicemail, and four is going to go to ring group two. And we're going to create the recording that allows that to be said. Thank you for calling, press one for Bill, two to find Lucas, three to leave a message, and four for sales. Something like that. Save that. Now that we have IVR2 created, we can create IVR1, which can also dial trunks, or dial the trunk, and can reach other extensions, has national rights, uh, all the same settings down here, key pressing events, 
Ring group two, IVR two, call Q two. And you can really build these any way you want. And then outside number and voicemail. And you can build them in, in layers. You can layer IVR and IVR and IVR and have lots and lots of menus or have no menus at all. It's completely up to you. And apply those changes. Now, if we go back to our original diagram, set up ring groups, queues, IVRs, and then double check the destinations of everything. Because IVRs were created last. Q second, ring group third. If I had any ring groups pointing to the other things, I have to go back and fix them. And to look at that, I have ring groups that point to extensions and end at IVR number one. That was ring group two, actually, that does that. So we're going to go back and look at our ring groups. And ring group two is supposed to end. Now that I have it created, I can send it to IVR two. Was it two? IVR one. And save. And this one was going to voicemail. We can double check that if we need to. Yeah and then apply that change. So once you've gone through and double checked everything to make sure that all of the stuff that's supposed to be pointing to each other is pointing where it needs to be, now we can go back and make the inbound routes that point to these things that we've just created. 